Hi everybody, this is Val again. I'm the curator here at Studio 23. And today I'm going to be talking a little bit about calligraphy, holographs, printing and textures. And this is inspired of course by Wilma Romance, our featured artist today. She's on our Art Around the City and she's also one of our 50 artists of the Great Lakes Bay. Now, if you heard our first segment, I was down there at Dry Dock talking about Wilma's background and about the fact that as a printmaker and she was all, she's also a clay artist, you need equipment, you need uh, your tribe around you, you need community, but there are some printmaking methods, many printmaking methods that you can adapt to a home situation. Now, the print that I'm showing here because what I want to tell you about, there are uh, pros and cons <laughs> with printmaking equipment. This is actually a collagraph I did earlier, and I did print this on my printing press. This is the plate that I used. It's on simple matte board, and it's built up with textures of gels and acrylic paste, and then wiped down with slow drying acrylic paint, and run through a uh, very uh, sophisticated printing press. So you're getting a, a certain quality of result here. This was an addition of about six prints that I could run off of these before the plate would start losing its edge or its detail. So this is one possibility for making a collagraph. The possibility that I'm going to be doing today is actually uh, printing with a, what I, it's a pin press. It's very heavy. It's almost like a giant rolling pin. And you can experiment at home with rolling pins to do this printing process. So this is going to become my printing press today. I'm going to take you through this step by step. But first let's talk about, let's talk about some of the supplies I'm using. So I'm going to be building up a texture here with co um, coarse molding paste and it's using a stencil. A simple sheet of matte board like I talked about before. And then I'm going to coat that after it's dry with gloss medium so that my slow drying ink can be easily wiped away in a subtractive way. Now, this plate has been used. You can tell it's already the, the black, and I'm going to be printing this one in a minute. But first, let me demonstrate how I made this plate, or a similar plate. So, easy breezy, I've got my mat board here. Okay, I'm gonna lay my stencil down. You've seen me do this in other demos. I'll give it a dollop of the coarse molding paste. Now, I could be using regular molding paste. I could be using light molding paste. Any kind of a texture or a grit, even a high solid gel would work because I'm gonna kind of what I, squeegee it through the stencil here and it's gonna give you a beautiful geometric design. Can hear that kind of grittiness of it. I love working with stencils. And think about making your own stencils too. You can use heavy acetate. I've used tag board. All sorts of ways you can use stenciling. I'm gonna leave this part kind of bare for now. And when I lift this off, You'll see it leaves behind this beautiful, intricate texture. And I'm, I'm leaving this just smooth. Once this dries, then I can coat it with the gloss medium. And I would give it a couple of coats of gloss medium. Here's one that's already done with the gloss medium. You see that shininess? This gives you a more of a non-porous coating on top of that porous molding paste and that way your ink can be lifted off very easily. Okay, so, so far, that's where we are. Here is 
a finished version that I have inked a few times. You see, I use the stencil here and then down here, I kind of abstract it a little bit. So you control the design and it's very fun to do them all the same size because you can then start building up a, um, a series with these little prints. All of these are non-objective, but you could easily go more objective like this one I did of a, um, this is looking into the alleyways of Siena, Italy. I pulled this out because Wilma draws inspiration from all of her travels, and this brings back fun memories for me. Okay, I'm gonna go back to my more abstract one here. It's a six inch by six inch square. All right, so I'm gonna be working with some Reeves BFK printing paper. It's a beautiful printing paper. I have it soaking right over here for a minute because you would want to have your printing papers in this particular case uh, damp and you could soak them for an hour even more and we'll be able to blot that dry just a bit. So let's see what we can pull here as a print. So this is a this is not considered a monoprint, or this is not considered a monotype, I should say, because this is something that I could make an addition. It is repeatable, it is a matrix. I could repeat this over and over. The inking might give it different looks each time, but it is repeating the, uh, the uh, lines and the image over and over. So that is a repeatable, that becomes then a, um, a matrix which can be uh, an addition. And that's very handy, especially if you're selling these because a lot of times people say, oh, I wish I bought that, I wish there was another one. And with this particular process, you may, just may have another one. So I'm rubbing in the ink and I'm gonna go fairly heavy with this because again, remember I told you I was working um, not with a regular printing press. I'm doing this by hand. So I'm gonna be pretty generous with this uh, open paint. This is carbon black. Okay. Okay, let's put just a little bit more on there. So the point is I'm getting that ink down into all the cracks and crevices. Okay, it's kind of messy, I have gloves on. Let's do a little more. Okay. I'm using a little blue paper towel. I have back in my studio, I could use some stiffened cheesecloth to really fine tune this inking. Now I'm kind of going into the subtractive method of it where I'm wiping off even more ink start with a new paper towel. Get that centered so you can see a little bit better. Let's wipe a lot of the ink off down here. Kind of fine tune it. Okay. All right. Now, I'm gonna take my gloves off so my hands are clean again. Be right back, I'm grabbing the dampened paper. First, I wanna put a clean sheet under this just to keep us rolling. So there's my inked plate, centered. Going to be using some blotting paper now. This is that wet paper. You can probably see the sheen of the dampness. Be right back. Just gonna blot it. When you're working with these beautiful printmaking papers, there there are a lot of times, and you won't be able to see this probably, but there's a watermark. I'm not sure if you can see it. So I'm gonna orientate that so that the viewer can see it. Hey, you can see it a lot better this way, I think. 
So let's put it, let's center this. Okay. Try to be careful not to let it slip around on top. Going to add a little tape at the top just to hold it down a bit. And to create some energy from my pin press into the paper, I'm going to put a felt blanket down to cushion and add more energy to the printing. You know, you've seen me work with jelly plates a lot where I'm just pressing on them. This one I have to be a little, much more deliberate, much heavier. Again, this is where if you were at home, your rolling pin would come out. But let's try the pin press and see what happens. Okay, so I've got the pin press and I'm gonna press as hard as I can. And I can feel the edge of that mat board as I roll back and forth. So let's see what kind of leverage I'm getting. <laughs> I'm not the strongest in the world. Ooh, okay, I'm gonna try a little bit more pressing. Okay, putting my full body weight in, yay. <laughs> On a regular printing press, you'd run that through and all that pressure would just, with the dampened paper, it's going to uh, deboss the edges and the whole nine yards. I am getting a little bit of debossing there. So let's pull this off. This is gonna have a little more delicate feel. Oh, I kind of like it. Okay, so there we go. Now you see, this print is more of a gray tone value, but it is giving you some beautiful line work. I would look at this and I would go, wait a minute, Val, you didn't subtract enough ink there. And I would probably pull another one. And you know what? I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to, if you can bear with me, I wanna pull one more. I have one more piece of dampened paper to do here. And then you'll be able to see the repetitive nature of this printmaking. So let me first take it off of here. This is gonna be a trick though, because you know what? <laughs> I'm probably gonna get my hands all dirty. But let's see what we can do. I see that, that spot right there. Okay, now let's refresh with just a bit more ink. Buffing it in. When you're printmaking, especially when you are uh, fine tuning the ink like I'm doing now, it seems like by the time you get to print number three and four, your plate is nice and primed. And I like that. It's, it takes patience, but, you, but I like that. I like seeing the different ways that the plate can be inked to make it darker or lighter. So let's see here. Okay, so this will be the second printing. I'll, I'll just do this. This will be my final printing today on this one. Don't want to keep you here all day. <laughs> okay, so there's my fresh sheet. There's my plate. Grabbing the dampened water, the piece of paper, blotting it. Talking loud so you can hear me. And... We'll lay that down. Do the same process, a little bit of tape on the top. Let's see what happens this time. I'm moving fast. And don't forget my felt to give me some energy with that press and the pin press. And rolling back and forth. Take a peek, because I have it taped down. Ah, oh, yeah, okay. I love when you reveal the print. Blank it off. Tape off. Let's see what I got this time. Ooh, 
See, I'm, I'm getting more detail. You see that? It just takes a little patience and you can build that right up. I like this one a lot better. This one I would sign a number. I would probably call this one an artist proof because I'm, I'm trying to get to my ultimate uh, design here. So this would be an AP over, well, one AP. I'm not gonna use the other one. I'm go that one's gonna be like a test. And then I would sign it right here right on the paper, mat it, frame it under glass, good to go. So this process is called Colographs, and it can be used with different acrylic products to build up your textures. You can collage cardboards on there or tag board. It's just the, the, uh, the ideas are unlimited with calligraphy. So calligraphy, collage, it's based on the word collaging materials. So I hope you enjoyed this demo and it's sure fun doing it for you. And thanks for watching, everybody. Have a wonderful weekend. <laughs> Bye now.